Welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. I am here with David Atwood. David Atwood is a board of director on the Houston Peace and Justice Center board. Welcome to Politics Done Right. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing good, Egberto. Really good. Thank well, you. look, uh, one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you, uh, we, we had our meetings, our board meeting, and I heard you make some comments about uh, the ins insurrection that we had on January 6th, and you wrote a piece for, a blog piece for, uh, that, that we placed on politics, done, or rather at, at our website, that was titled, My Thoughts About the Underlying Factors Leading to January 6th. Right. I, I'd like to know, in, in your point of view, what do you think really led up to January 6th? Is this something new? Is it something that's been in the making? What are your thoughts on this? Well, I think that there are a lot of underlying things that have been going on in our country for a long time. And, uh, you know, one of the things is economic inequality, which has got much worse in the last 40 years, but we've always had it. It's nothing, nothing new. But uh, in the last 40 years, that's got much worse. And so there are a lot of people that are, uh, I think they're just feeling left out of what's going on in this country. Uh, and so, uh, even though, I mean, Donald Trump really, I don't want to downplay at all his role. I mean, he really uh, exacerbated that um, in, in his tax cuts that he supposedly put through and uh, he made it worse, but he also made worse the whole, uh, the, the, the bigotry and the racism that we've had in this country for the beginning of the country. And I think all these things played together uh, along with, uh, I, I hate to say it, but there are members in the uh, faith, faith community, faith leaders that seem to mm -hmm. add fuel to the fire and the things that they were saying. And then this all sort of just came together um, with the inflammatory words of, uh, of Donald Trump and it exploded. Now, in your paper, in the piece that you wrote, you said the Republican Party allowed an unqualified man like Trump to become its candidate for president. Political parties should always pick someone who cares deeply about the citizens of the nation and the welfare of the nation itself. Right, right. And, and, and Donald Trump, it was obvious after a while that he was in there that he cared primarily about himself. But we have a lot of other politicians. I call them the enablers of Donald Trump. Uh, when that first impeachment came up, you know, they they would deal with it in the Senate, and uh, or even a lot of people in the House of Representatives. And so, Donald Trump and shouldn't have ever been in there, but he got in. Um, he's not the kind of person we'd ever want to have as president. Uh, we've had other people in as president that I haven't really cared that much for, but I think that they had some loyalty to the country and to the people of the country, although it wasn't perfect, it never is perfect, but Trump was the, really the worst. And, uh, and then he had these people, I call them the enablers. When he first got, I think he was in maybe about a year, I started thinking about the history of this world and people that we've had, especially, um, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the history of Europe, uh, the, the Nazi regime, what happened. I've traveled to Italy several times. I'm familiar with what happened in Italy. And it's happened in other countries where you've had an autocratic kind of person get in. Well, they couldn't stay in if it wasn't for the enablers. They're surrounded by enablers that allow them to do the bad things that they did. And so we had the same thing here. And my God, if we had not, if we still have problems even with Trump leaving as of basically today, uh, but uh, uh, if he got in for another four years with surrounded by his enablers, I don't know what would have happened in this country. It's bad enough as it is. We've got a lot to deal with in the next four years or so in terms of this, uh, um, I, I really call it almost a mental illness that we have in this country now. 
mental illness among many people who believe things that are absolutely not true. Uh, they don't seem to think for themselves. That's why I brought up the other thing in that paper about education. A lot of people don't really understand how fragile mm -hmm. our democracy is and how it's important to have a, a system where the people vote, the people, uh, their vote counts. But the number of people that voted for Trump, oh my God, I, I mean, just we still have a, a serious mm -hmm. problem going forward. And so the need for education of our, our, our young people. And I, I don't know about the older folks in the middle age. I don't know if they're salvageable at this point, but uh, we have such a need for education on the importance of democracy and the importance of, um, of, of having good people in office, people who care. Now you work a lot with uh, the Houston Peace and Justice Center. And I get your mailings throughout the day. You, you uh, put out a lot of information every day continuously. I think um, it, 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 it important information. How do you think we can get people aware? I mean, uh, like I said, in your little niche that you're doing, at, I don't know where you're, I don't know from whence you're, from where you're sending out all this stuff, but you read important stuff that, uh, that, that you find useful and you put it through the Houston Peace and Justice Center mailing list and you send it out quite often. Very important stuff. How do you think, what can we do to put this information in a manner that those 74 million uh, ill-informed people and I, and I don't even mean that as a pejorative or anything. It's just, you know, it, it's just the way it is. Um, how do we get that information to them? I know you're working through the Peace and Justice Center, but how do we, how can we further that? Well, I think we need to, um, you know, how many people see what's on the Houston Peace and Justice Center website or, or even, you know, see what I send out? What you're doing, Egberto, is really great. I mean, you're getting the word out there. We just need to do, uh, I think we ought to focus on that and try to answer your question. Uh, how do we get the word out there? I, I know that there are different ways. A lot of people now are getting, you know, they, they get their, their communication, they get all their misinformation through different uh, sites, websites, and um, things that are on the computer. And, and there's, they're get, you know, they, they've got kicked off on some of this recently because it was so outrageous and it led to January 6th. But I don't think, to answer your question, I don't think we're doing enough good enough job getting our message out. Um, I do, do, I try to do what I can do through the Houston Peace and Justice Center. I'm also involved with uh, Pax Christi, which is a Catholic peace and justice organization I've been involved with for many years. I send stuff to them um, they get it out, but even there, it's not enough. Um, you know, one of one of I, I have noticed one of the things is that the, 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 there's a certain value in misinforming people, right? A misinformed people can be directed to do things that they wouldn't normally do. Like a, a lot of people really uh, hit, you know, were really hard on all those marchers in D.C. And I took a different stance. I I, I took it. I took the stance that. All those people can't be bad people. In fact, we probably deal with them every day. Uh, right. One of the problems is that they're so misinformed and they, 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 they so look for the wrong boogeyman for their problems. Right. right. And that, right. that goes with informing them appropriately. Absolutely. And I think one of the problems is that, I mean, they're, they're getting it from many different sources. You know, they, they get on the, on the computer and they look up certain things. They get information that's misinformation there. They get it from, you know, they got a whole bunch of misinformation from Twitter, from Trump directly. And then, but I think it even starts earlier than that. They, I mean, a lot of people, we're fortunate in that we've had opportunities to get, I'd say, relatively well-educated. But a lot of people live in areas of the country where, and grow up in families where this information goes from generation to generation. And uh, they, they go to churches. And I, I, I know this because I, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I have some uh, people in my own family that fall into that category. They get misinformation from some of these pastors at churches that's just mm -hmm. off the wall, in my opinion. My mm -hmm. humble opinion is off the wall. And uh, so the education has to start early. Um, it, it really, our whole education system, I think needs to, I, and I've heard, and I'm not really an expert on this, but I've heard that, um, you know, there's been conscious efforts to cut out certain information from educational programs, you know, about the history of this country. Well, you know, the 1776 project that Donald Trump just came out with to lie about how it's, whether slavery was really a, 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 the hypocrisy yeah. of our founders. And we also have, I don't know if, if you follow back in the 60s, the Powell Manifesto that actually tried to teach Americans not, you know, and, and when the progressives were getting ahead, it's like we can't have sm too many smart people around because effectively they'll realize that our economic system is really a biased system. So, I mean, there are a whole lot of, you're correct, there's a whole lot of folks out there, or there's a whole lot of people out there intent on making a certain percentage of us ill-informed. Absolutely. And, and it starts, it starts early on, unfortunately. Um, and it, it goes, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but a lot of people, I mean, if you took the people that were in Washington on January 6th, I know there were some people there that were more highly educated, but probably the vast majority are not that well educated. They get well, their information from the internet, from their church communities, from their parents who probably weren't very well educated. And they, and then they feel disenfranchised. Uh, they, they, they look at their lives and say, I'm not doing too well. And, and they just, they, they soak this stuff up. And to a lot of us, it's hard to believe that they soak this stuff up, but they do. And, and also, you know, the Latino community, they had to fight for, for studies. I mean, was, I mean, the history of this country in terms of the African American community, the Latino community, um, you know, they've had to fight to get certain things in the curriculum even, because that was part of that effort. When we see it in Texas, in spades sometimes and some of our politicians mm -hmm. that we have, you know, in high levels. Um, but I want getting back to your question about how do we do a better job educating? That is a fantastic question. And I really don't have all the question, all the answers, but I know that we, I, I agree that we have to do it. And it, it, I think it has to, it ought to be almost like, there ought to be a, I hate to use the word commission, but there ought to be a group of people that are studying the education system in our country and looking at all the aspects of that and asking that question, how do we better educate and how do we get people to really know the history of this country and really the history of the world in terms of autocratic leaders and the yeah. fragility of democracy. I'm glad you said that because, you know, the reality is a democracy requires a certain level of education, to put it bluntly. It, it requires, I mean, it requires that you, you're, you're educated enough to know that there are certain sacrifices that need to be made as opposed to the immediacy of certain things that you want today. All these things are necessary. We, we, I mean, and, and it's not to sound, in this case, it's not to sound elitist. It's not to sound snobbish. It's just uh, in certain, you know, I mean, uh, there are times that we want to ship democracy all over the world. The truth of the matter is a country has to be ready for democracy with a population that is ready for democracy, where everyone really has a voice in, in, in ruling. Right. And I think that the, uh, the low numbers on voting mm -hmm. is telling. People don't, if they don't vote, they don't really, that, that really says that they don't really understand Right. How important it is to vote, um, and we, so that's part of it. Um, I know there are efforts being made to improve all that, but I think January sixth showed us that we need to do a much better job 
in terms of education. And, um, and we need to call out people that, that, you know, that put out information that's incorrect. And we've seen some of that. I mean, this time the president was so outrageous. I, that probably, if there hadn't been that horrible mm -hmm. rally and invasion, now there's nothing wrong with a rally, but the invasion of the Capitol, the insurrection, if that hadn't happened, then Trump's mm -hmm. words would have just been out there again, along with all his Twitters um, about, you know, putting out misinformation. The only thing right. that really brought this to a head was the fact that they attacked the, the Capitol in Washington. And it's a it's been a wake up call, I think, for a lot of people, even for a bunch of Republicans who have been well, Trump's they're, neighbors. They're scared now, but I'm I'm running on time now, David. So let me uh, ask you one last question. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank you for being here. I mean, you do a lot of important work with the Peace and Ju Houston Peace and Justice Center, and I uh, one of the things that I always want to do with a program like Politics Done Right is to highlight those people that are out there in the field trying to make this a better world. Is there something that you would have liked me to ask you that I didn't? Well, let me just say this. As you know, I'm very interested in uh, Dr. King's teaching about the beloved community. The question is, how do we create this beloved community? And I think it's incumbent on people to get out of their comfort zones and go out into the community and meet people that are not like them. People of different races, religions, uh, nationalities. That's the only way that I think we will develop this beloved community where we really care for each other and really respect each other. And we, we never resort to violence to solve our problems. So that's the only thing I would say about that is that um, I was fortunate. I, I got involved in some things that took me into the community. And I met people that don't look like me, don't think like me, uh, are, are different from me. And that was a blessing. That was a blessing. So we have to get out of our comfort zones and go out and do that. And uh, I, think, I think if we do that, That'll, that, that's part of the education process going both ways is meeting other people. David Atwood, Board of Directors, P Houston Peace and Justice Center. Thank you so kindly for having been here. You don't only speak it, you live it. Thank you so kindly for being on Politics and Right. Thank you, Egberto. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.